Hello everyone, my name is Rohit Rahi and I'm part of the Oracle Cloud Infrastructure team. In this video, we are going to look into Oracle Cloud Infrastructure at a very high level. So first, look, look, let's look at the Oracle Cloud Infrastructure global footprint. Currently, Oracle operates 16 regions globally. This includes 11 commercial regions and 5 government regions. You can see the regions listed here. In Americas, we have 4 regions. In Europe, we have 3 regions. In Asia, we have 4 regions. And then for government, we have 2 US government regions and 3 US DOD regions. Over the next 13 months or so, we are planning to operate uh, 20 new regions which includes 17 commercial regions and three US government regions. There are three main reasons why we are doing this. First, we, we really want to give our customers a truly geo-distributed footprint so they can run their application closest to their users. The second is for regional meeting regional compliance needs. And the third is for giving and pro uh, providing customers an option for in-country disaster recovery solutions. So as planned, 11 of the countries or jurisdictions served by local cloud regions will have two or more regions to facilitate this in-country or in-jurisdiction disaster recovery capabilities. So as I was saying, if you see right here on the screen, uh, Japan today we have one region, but in future, next 13 months or so, we'll have a second region to provide this in-country DR capability. The same thing holds for India, the same thing holds for Brazil uh, and m many other uh, countries uh, throughout the world. So as we were explaining on the previous slide, uh, by the end of next year, calendar year 2020, we will end up with 36 Oracle regions. And these regions are listed here uh, along with some of the government regions. And one thing I didn't talk about is we also have an interconnect with Azure. So today we have interconnect with Azure in uh, in the US, in the in the uh, in in the Ashburn region, and in the London region. Over over the next 13 months or so, we are going to expand that in multiple places in the US and also in Asia and Europe just to give customers uh, an extra option to connect to Azure regions if they are running applications uh, across uh, Azure and Oracle Cloud infrastructure in a truly uh, uh, multi-cloud uh, uh, fashion. So let's look at the core concepts of a region. Uh, a region is comprised of isolated, uh, completely independent uh, data centers called availability domains. And as you can see here, each region uh, or traditional Oracle Cloud infrastructure regions were comp comprised of three different availability domains. Now within an availability domains, we group hardware and infrastructure together uh, into this construct called a fault domain. A fault domain is a failure isolation boundary within an availability domain. Each availability domain, as you can see here, has at least three fault domains. This number is well suited for hosting quorum based replicated storage systems and consensus algorithms, which are some of the basic primitives of fault tolerant systems. For example, if your replication system uses groups of three nodes, then place each node in separate fault domain. If your system uses larger groups, then distribute the nodes from each group as evenly as possible across all the fault domains in an AD. Now, I said traditional Oracle Cloud infrastructure regions because the regions we have operated until now or opened until now, you can see here, always comprised of three uh, availability domains. Now going forward, we have chosen to launch regions in new geographies with one AD. Why are we doing this? To increase our global reach uh, quickly. So for any region with one AD, like these regions listed here, uh, a second AD or region in the same country or geopolitical area will be made available within a year to enable further options for disaster recovery and data residency. 
Now let's look look inside an AD uh, for our uh, the high scale high performance uh, network. So as you can see here, we have a physical network like like any of the cloud providers. Uh, it's a non oversubscribed network, so we don't run into things like noisy neighbor problems. And so it operates at a very high scale. You can see some numbers here. And we have predictable low latency and high speed interconnect between uh, hosts in running if you have multiple uh, availability domains within a region. Now we have made some drastic changes into how virtual networking is done over this physical network with Oracle Cloud infrastructure. We call this capability off-box network virtualization. As the name implies, we put all the virtualization out into the network uh, using custom silicon cards. Uh, so this includes all the storage and network IO virtualization. So this gives us nearly zero uh, performance uh, overhead. Uh, generally, this enables the next layer up so we can take any physical form factor and plug that into our virtual uh, network. So as you can see here, this is the basis that lets us do bare metal instances and engineer systems like Exadata and plug them into our environment without making any changes. If this was not the case, we would need to slap a hypervisor here on Exadata to make it work. We don't have to do it because of this capability called off-box network virtualization. It is a massive enabler for us to deliver the classes of services and meet our goals around performance and security. So until now, we were talking about the global footprint, uh, our physical network and our virtual network. The thing which really makes the cloud shine are the infrastructure services which run on top of this global infrastructure. So as you can see here, uh, we have a very broad and deep uh, platform starting with identity, uh, different classes of networking, different capabilities of networking, different classes and form factors for compute, whether it's bare metal, whether it's virtual machines, whether it's whether it's dedicated host, uh, a Kubernetes service, uh, various classes of storage, local storage, block storage, file storage, object storage, archive storage, uh, of course, various flavors of databases, uh, bare metal, virtual machines, exadata, uh, autonomous databases, um, serverless offerings, uh, analytics offerings, a uh, bunch of next layer services, uh, um, bunch of security services, and so on and so forth. The whole idea is every cloud is becoming a platform and you need these uh, different services, uh, a very broad uh, set of services, uh, and you also need a lot of functionality within each of these services. So this slide just talks about each of these various uh, services at a very high level. Over the next uh, few uh, lectures, modules, we will be uh, diving deep into each of these services and you can see that each of them have pretty detailed, rich functionality. And if you go to this URL, you can see that uh, we have something like 50 plus services uh, today in Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. And over the next one year or so, uh, we have a very aggressive roadmap and we are on a very uh, fast uh, release uh, feature and service velocity. So what is our differentiation? Because this comes up all the time when we talk about uh, uh, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. So it's always good to think about differentiation uh, on two dimensions, on the technical side uh, and on the business side. So on the technical side, we already talked about uh, performance. Enterprises require the scale and the performance and we believe that Oracle Cloud Infrastructure is truly differentiated here. We talked about how we use the custom silicon cards uh, to give you zero overhead uh, through this off-box network virtualization. Uh, we were the first cloud to launch bare metal instances uh, and our compute service actually is run on top of this. So it gets all the benefits of the bare metal uh, uh, offering uh, with, you know, like the best performance possible, etc. Uh, we use, um, you know, local NVMe storage with that to give you millions of IOPS. And again, we'll talk about this in, in more details later. Uh, everything st storage wise on Oracle Cloud Infrastructure is SSD based. Uh, and we use the newer uh, protocols like NVMe to give you really fast uh, performance. There is no network CPU or memory oversubscription anywhere. So this again uh, ties very well 
to our performance uh, story. Oracle Cloud Infrastructure is also battle tested. Uh, some of our internal uh, assets uh, and offerings like uh, on, on particularly on the SaaS side like NetSuite uh, are running on Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. They are running on a massive scale uh, and so what you are using as customers has really been battle tested whether it's operational uh, activities whether it's scale whether it's resilience whether it's reliability uh, all whether it's security so we have sort of you know battle tested these uh, ourselves by running our own apps on top of uh, oracle cloud infrastructure uh, whether it comes to database options whether it's bare metal whether it's virtual machines exadata rack none of these exist anywhere else outside oracle cloud infrastructure so if you are an oracle customer you're using some of these uh, offerings today on premises you have to look nowhere else because you could run the same uh, um, offerings and get you know better price performance running on uh, oracle cloud infrastructure and again uh, the last point here uh, we are truly an enterprise cloud uh, because we are supporting all these enterprise apps uh, which no other cloud uh, supports today on the business side we have a very aggressive and predictable pricing it's a very simple pricing uh, it's globally we have the same pricing everywhere uh, the pricing model is easier to understand and if, finally it's cheaper than some of the cloud providers out there uh, we uh, have slas on performance management and availability most of the other cloud providers give you SLAs only on availability we have three dimensions because again we believe customers need uh, those different dimensions as well uh, we have some of the licensing uh, innovations like bring your own license so you could if you have licenses on-prem you could just use them in the cloud uh, and things like universal cloud uh, cloud credits uh, and finally this is not a small one uh, you get support through one org it's a reality that most of the most of the enterprises are going to run in a hybrid environment so if you're running something on premises you're running something in the cloud you have one support model whether it runs in the cloud or on prem and you could get support through through one channel one one um, one uh, mechanism so uh, that's all for uh, a quick introduction uh, on oracle cloud infrastructure here are some of the links on always free tier uh, some of the trainings labs um, and youtube uh, location where you can watch some of these videos please do join me if you have some time please do join me in the next lecture where we talk about uh, oracle cloud infrastructure identity and access management thank you for